a new foundation for growth and prosperity that will put opportunity within the reach of not just African Americans, but all Americans. All Americans of every race, of every creed, from every region of the country. We want everybody to participate in the American dream. That was an inspiring speech, and it was President Obama in 2009. Fast forward to today, and our next guest says things did not work out. Black folks actually lost ground under President Obama. Joining us is Tavis Smiley, PBS host and author of 50 for the Future, Lessons from Down the Road. Tavis, an honor to have you on the show. Mr. Varney, an honor to be here, sir. I say that what you're missing here mm -hmm. is economic growth. President Obama went for fairness, mm -hmm. spread it around. If he'd have gone for economic growth, everybody would have been better off. Uh, where am I going wrong? I'm not sure that you're necessarily wrong about that. I, I, I think the historians are going to debate uh, ad infinitum whether or not he should have started with economics first as opposed to health care policy. That's yep. going to be a debate for years to come. Um, but in the end, the, the point of the book that I wrote that came out in January, The Covenant with Black America, 10 years later, we did a version a decade ago, we found that over the last 10 years, black people have lost ground in every major economic category. In every major category, black folk have lost ground. Now, clearly, one cannot lay that exclusively at the feet of Mr. Obama. There was a headwind and obstructionism. That's true. But his most loyal constituency didn't gain any ground over the last 10 years, and that saddens me in a way that I can't even describe. But that's because of the basic Obama policy, which was all government all the time. Private enterprise will be tightly regulated. Rich people will be taxed more. And you just run up the debt. And it didn't work for anybody, quite I mean, frankly, I mean, except maybe the super rich. Yeah, well, the, the rich always get richer and the poor get poorer. And this gap between the rich and the rest of us continues to, to expand. But here's why I like what Bernie Sanders is saying. And respectfully, here's why I disagree with you. What we haven't focused enough on in this country is poverty, income inequality and economic immobility and all three of those things are tied together and so that the rich and the lucky continue to do better and we continue to talk about trickle down if the rich do better then the poor will do better a rising tide will lift all boats I just that that theory just doesn't hold but it does it doesn't economic growth raises everybody's boat and if, if you it have, gives everybody a shot at moving up the food chain if, that's look you and I are very alike we both come mm -hmm. from humble backgrounds arrive in America and do our thing mm -hmm. and succeed going to the top that's what your books all about yeah. you can't succeed like that mm -hmm. America doesn't work without strong economic growth it just doesn't I'm all for economic growth but I'm also for fundamental fairness and that's what this country lacks and so that a rising tide lifts all boats if you have a boat but if you're in a dinghy much less just diddling around in the water, then you're really in trouble. Long and so, time since I heard an American use the word dinghy. No, but, you, but <laughs> no, it's not but an American you, word. You, you, you have to have something. You have to have something to rise up in. And furthermore, if the tide comes up too fast, then you get taken under anyway. And so the, this notion of a rising tide lifts all boats oh. is nuanced in a lot of different ways. Could some black folks vote for Donald Trump? Would you support oh, them doing it? I Before they go into that, <laughs> oh, this is about to get good. Okay, um, so far. Um, I'm enjoying the conversation because they both have made points. They both have made points. Um, I know people, I know for a fact that if the water rises too fast and people aren't prepared, they will be taken under, they will die, they will lose a lot of what they already have. That happened in New Orleans. Remember? Um, Hurricane Katrina. Um, and a lot of people were, that's when they was all standing on top of the day, going roof, um, their, their roofs, waving flags, trying to get help and all that other stuff because that's how high the water rose. And a lot of people passed away. A lot of people died. And it was a bunch of crime and all that other stuff because, hey, my stuff is gone. I got to take your stuff. And a whole bunch of just, just ridiculousness. But overall, the other gentleman is making the most points, the, the best points anyway, because something that we tend to do is we tend to give people um, um, uh, a bigger excuse to not move forward and do what they have to do uh, so that they can make sure that they have a boat, make sure that they can patch the boat they already have, make sure that they look for opportunities rather than just depending on um, the, the status quo to, to, I guess, take care of them and their families. Like if you, black people are creative. We extremely creative. Y'all heard of hip hop before. Y'all heard of break dancing before. We're extremely creative so you mean to tell me that when it comes to supporting your family you can't be creative you can't do what you got to do i i call bs on that 
I call BS on that. Now we're about to find out what he believes about black people voting for Donald Trump. In fact, you know, every election, some black vote, vote for, for Republicans. But, Mitt Romney had about, what, 4% last time around, something like that, 6%. Um, I thought before Donald Trump went completely nutty. <laughs> uh, and I contest that. And I, I know you would, and, and, you, and, you're, and you're entitled to it. It's your program. Um, <laughs> I have called him before, we'll call him again, a racial arsonist. He's setting fires everywhere he goes. I think he's irascible. I think he's unrepentant. We will see in the coming days whether or not he disciplines himself enough to get the nomination. Uh, we but, would like to see. But I don't think that fortune and fame fix the flaws. Donald Trump's true colors have already been seen. Okay. So the American people will have their say. I do. Now, one thing I will say, he's been, he's, He's overly sensitive to Donald Trump's uh, mannerisms, not necessarily paying attention to his rhetoric, because if he paid attention to his rhetoric, he would see that a lot of what he came in the door saying and, and a lot of the things that he did while president, those were the same ideas he had back in 1986 when he was being interviewed. He was only a, a real estate mogul then, a real estate mogul. He wasn't even the Hollywood guy that had all of the Hollywood friends and all that other stuff yet. I mean, he was because he was up and coming. He was really, really uh, wealthy and, and he hung in those crowds and everything. But be, that was before he got the apprentice show and all those other things. And something that we failed to realize is because this right here is saying black people, this title right here, it says Tavis Smiley says black people have lost ground under Obama. Well, duh, it wasn't, it's, it was under Obama, but the, at the end of the day, it was the policies of Democrats. Like black people lose out under Democrats. That's just what happens, bro. It's just what happens. And for someone who's been, see, a lot of these brainiacs who are, who are extremely knowledgeable of politics and these social woes and whatnot that's going on in these in, in black culture and all over the the United States because you study this, this is your livelihood, this is what you do for a living. You probably even ran for office before. I wouldn't be surprised. You're writing books about it. This book that you wrote that you just now told him about, probably like your fifth book you've written. But how do you not give the people who who've got your ear the truth you're just as bad as obama in my opinion if you're not giving people the truth and you're not telling people that yo get out there and do it stop comparing yourself to other people stop looking back so much you keep on looking back while walking forward what's going to happen you're going to fall in the ditch you're going to get clipped up you're going to walk in front of a speeding bus or something like that and get your tail toe up Something bad is going to happen because you're not paying attention to where you're going, first of all. So you're constantly looking back. Who you think is going to get further ahead? The people who are looking back or the people who are constantly looking forward like, oh, let's go, let's go. I'm happy. Hey, how you doing? You want me to help? Okay, I'll help you. You're going to help me? I'm going to help you. Those people are building teams while the other people are looking back. We don't have this. We don't have that. Look at how they treated us. Look at what they say to us. Look, if we keep on doing that, who's going to win? We're not going to win. Black people are not going to win by doing that. And you're doing black culture a disservice by con continually feeding them that mess. But then when Donald Trump comes through and he started to say whatever he want to say, he's not a politician. He's not only pissing off black people, he's pissing off lifelong um, um, politicians. He's pissing off people that he's supposed to be working with. Why? Because right is right and wrong is wrong. Did he have an agenda? Obviously. Can you trust him 1,000%, 100%? No, because he's a politician now. Now he's a politician. And I don't fully trust any politicians. But at the end of the day, when you look at what they stand for, come on, man, how can you possibly put more on the Democratic Party in a positive way than you would Trump? And clearly he did a better job do want to talk about your book, and sure. I've only got Ooh. 10 seconds. Oh. No, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> it, it's surely about the American dream, it is. which we both share. That's true. Am I going to get something out of that if I read it? You absolutely will. You and everybody else, I think. It's, it's a book that uh, certainly is, is a good gift for college graduates and high school graduates right about now, but also a good gift for those who are stuck, who 
who, whose yeah. dreams and aspirations are still unrealized, and for those people like me who still think every day they can get better. I've, I've gotten a lot we, of good advice. We were in my life. stuck in yeah. our 20s, weren't we? Yeah. Both of us. We were. And, you, and you know who got me out of the mess? Who did? Ronald Reagan. <laughs> he gave me a whopping great big and, tax and break, me, and I he, took you off. You know who put me in a mess? Ronald oh. Reagan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it a book that I hope will inspire people, empower right. people, and uplift people to make better choices and live better lives. I just want people to get the most out of whatever uh, they I'm have I'm with you on that. Yeah. Great to have you on the show. Good to see you. If man. you're not careful, you get an invite back. <laughs> that was a good conversation. Um, whether you agree with either one of them or not, I believe that was a good conversation and some of us will walk away from it with something that we can take to another conversation and continue the conversation and hopefully you don't take it to someone that's just going to accept every single thing you say because that's not how you grow you constantly want to surround yourself around people if you constantly want to surround yourself around people who agree with every single thing you say you're not growing you're not you're not getting challenged you're not being presented something that you didn't already know or you cannot present something that you know to be true, that you know to be beneficial to someone who's doubted it before. If they already believe in the same thing, okay, what's the point of our conversation? Just to go back and forth and make each other feel good? Yeah, you're on the right team. I'm on the right team. You're on the right team. We're both on the right team. Yay. Go team. What's next? Let's complain about the other people. There's no growth in that. That's what I got, man. Love y'all. Bye.